Okay, imagine with me teachers on fire that you've got a Google form that you're using somehow somewhere in your education community and you've got a teammate or a couple of teammates or a few teammates that you want to receive notifications every time a form is submitted, but you don't want to do this. You don't want to go up here and add collaborators because if you do that, yes, they can activate instant notifications for form submissions, but then they also have the power to edit your form. You may not want that. You may want to retain sole control of the form itself. So how do we do this? How do we set this up so that these teammates over here can receive a notification every time a form is submitted, whether a t-shirt needs to be ordered or a Chromebook needs to be repaired or whatever action needs to follow. You want to be able to delegate that action. So let's say that you are in that position and I've got a Google form as an example here. This is a form that I used a few years ago on the podcast. I'm not using it today. So sorry, it does not exist in the general public anymore. My voice is cracking. I'm so excited to share this with you. But what I would do if I was doing this again is exactly what I'm describing here. I would share not the form, but I would share instead the Google sheet of responses. So let's talk about this. How do we set this up? What you would do is you would go up here to share. So this is the first step and you would type in the name of your amazing teammate, Mr. KV at gmail.com to be on the safe side. I would set it for editing privileges. So now Mr. KV has control of the form. Now we need to go into Mr. KV's view of this same Google sheet. Now we're in Mr. KV's Google drive. Remember, this is the teammate that we are trying to offload the action connected to this Google form. Mr. KV is going to select shared with me. He's going to find the Google sheet that was just shared with him. There it is. Notice top right, we've got the user, Mr. KV. This is the teammate. This is the collaborator. I'm trying to be very clear about that. Now, Mr. KV, what can he do to receive notifications? He's going to go up to tools and select notification settings, edit notifications. And now notice he can set it up so that he will receive a notification anytime a change is made or anytime a user submits a form. So for the scenario I just described, it would probably be this. Whenever a user submits a form, the virtual assistant, Mr. KV is going to, in the example of the Teachers on Fire sticker submission, or sticker order, I should say, the virtual assistant would mail a sticker to that person. And then he can set it up so that the email comes on a daily basis or straight away. Now, if you select straight away, you're going to get a lot of messages, right? Or you could, in theory, get a lot of messages depending on how this form is being used. So you may just want to say one email per day is sufficient. And if I want to, let's say again, using this example of mailing stickers, then I just need one list of the day's order at a time. But if you're in a school environment and maybe there's something else like a Chromebook repair request, which my school uses, you might want that email straight away. And then Mr. KV, the virtual assistant, can save those settings and the notification rule is in place. And now what you've done is you've allowed a teammate or a collaborator to receive notifications every time a form is submitted without giving them, and here's the key, without giving them access to the form so that they have the power to change things or mess anything up with your precious Google form. Hey, if this video is helpful in any way and you found some value here, would you give me a like on the video and subscribe to the channel? And I'll see you again soon in the next video. Take care. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go.